Your concept is fundamentally flawed. Weapons are in inanimate objects. They cannot provoke anything. Well, that is incorrect right there. Everything um, we make provokes us to create the civilization that we design. We invented agriculture and tools to work the ground and so came fast food restaurants and so came dinner plates and everything that you touch was um, provoked or inspired by something inanimate. Um, it's exactly the opposite of what you're just of what you're stating. The human mind is the cause. The human mind is not the cause alone. The human mind reacts, is inspired, is stimulated, interacts with the world. We are put in a world, in a physical world, with, with hazards, with climate problems, with a bunch of things that we have to confront. With a, and, you know, we interact with it. Then we take our hands and our intelligence uh, is vastly different to animals in that we can invent things and understand sciences and create engineering. And so our world becomes a fusion, a combination of both things, of what we produce through our mind being inspired by other physical things, whether it's nat natural things uh, like rocks falling on our heads from an earthquake and we have to build strong structures to actually reacting and being inspired by our own physical inventions. One of the problems of critical uh, logic is that people, the human mind tends to ten think linearly because of this, that, because of this, that. And existence is a, is a space, a three-dimensional space in which several things are true. So, for example, the result of civilization is not just because of inanimate objects, not, you know, all this linear thinking. It's simultaneous things that you have to always be um, um, fusing, how do you say, uh, crunching, um, processing simultaneously. That's how you get to understand existence and human behavior, social behavior, is by crunching several truths simultaneously. And the result is always something that is also spatial and three-dimensional. It's not the one single answer. The one single answer, the single story, is creating this horrible, limited, self-destructive world that we live in. Okay, let me see. What else? Did, oh, I moved it. Yikes. Oops. Oh, there it is. Um, therefore, you seek. Therefore, if you seek peace but arm for war, you retain peace by showing potential aggressors. Yes, we are peaceful but still prepared for war. I don't even know what to do with that. Um, it just changes too much. Um, aggr aggr uh, in summary, objects don't think they have no mind, therefore, well, I explained that we uh, are stimulated, we are affected by things and react. We have, if we had no weapons laying before us, we may get really angry, we may tell our friends, hey, let's join up against those people, like, like John says, monkeys do, that they will pick up rocks and throw them and create war. The, he defines war as just... Uh, clan uh, group dynamics where people they they stay in hostility for a prolonged amount of time and yet we may even do that but without the existence of weapons we would not organize and plan civilization according to this introduced element facilitated by the weapons we would not put it on the shelf and say well you know if anything happens we have an army and we could launch war and when war happens it's its own definition it destroys another country it kills innocent people it, it, it creates contamination it's 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 in a whole other category than the monkeys fighting across the river you know it's 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 our own thing it's a definition that applies to something humanity has done not something that is found in nature there are a lot of things that humanity has done which are not found in nature we have built skyscrapers that, you know, stand like a spore and 
for the reasons of living in it. You know, nature kind of would would have would have said, "Hey, wait, it's too impractical, windy." Uh, I give I, I do like a, a point ten earthquake every every so often. That's never going to stand. It would never have produced such a such a habitat for for um, for um, termites or what have you. We create things that exceed the envelope of of nature's greater wisdom, and so we're still struggling to be true to ourselves, which is basically coming back to nature. The ideal there is, and it's not coincidental that we have a diplomacy and that we uh, feel that in, in many ways uh, war is wrong and uh, we fight and protest and uh, oppose war and, and you know, what, where do you think all that comes from? Do you think it's just weak people? I mean, what I question is why are people in this group so bent on supporting War as if it is the prime uh, vanguard conclusion of human civilization. You know, what, what's going on here? Why, is, why are you all so uh, into defending and, and, and not acknowledging that the higher wisdom, the more philosophical pursuit of humanity has been greater and alongside the continuing occurrence of war that we are trying to overcome war, war and not have it anymore so we created the united nations except we fail in our in our design and inventions because we can't seem to get a grip on the fact that we um, still are not able to um, stop this mad careening out of control aspect of civilization so our the united nations instead of really looking at the human predicament before the ability of making war and really trying to stop war for civilization as it proposes in its preamble it just kind of officializes it it kind of says oh you know well you know let's honor treaties and let's just tell people to stop uh, to stop and then we don't resolve the problem that caused the war the united nations is useless it kind of just makes it official it makes it formalized and defines the the uh the development of uh, belligerent militant situations okay that's it seven minutes that's the shortest one don't complain okay it's only eight minutes bye